New legislation in Ireland could criminalize free expression online, including users posting memes in a proposed new anti-hate speech law. The legislation backed by the prime minister comes in response to riots that erupted in Dublin last month over the stabbing death of a woman and three children outside of a local school. So here to react, journalist and author of The Twitter Files, Matt Taibbi. Matt, great to see you again today. You've been on Capitol Hill again this week. It's basically been a year since you dove into The Twitter Files and talked about what you've seen in this collusion between government and big tech. Um, as, you, as you testified this week and you heard sort of, I don't know, did you hear a change of tone? What, what, when you talk to Congressman Dan Goldman or other Democrats, what's the, been the biggest revelation for you? Here we are one year later. Well, a year ago, they basically denied that this was happening at all. Um, you, you most often heard uh, this is a conspiracy theory. The FBI actually put out a statement saying that, you know, nobody should pay attention to the work of conspiracy theorists. Now, you know, after a year, we, we've already had a, a case that's gone to the Supreme Court. It's still there. But four federal judges have ruled that this, is, this stuff is happening and it's violating the First Amendment. So they can't really say that. So now they've moved on to saying it's good. And uh, it, it is legal, technically, is what they're saying. But th these laws are being put in place all over the world now. You mentioned Ireland. I mean, there's also the EU. There's a there are horrible laws in New Zealand and, uh, you know, in Australia that have already been put in place. So this is not just an American phenomenon anymore. No, in fact, what was the global phenomenon, I would argue, was the American embrace of the First Amendment and the, the, the concept of free speech. In other words, what I'm saying is I'm not surprised that Europe goes down the path of censoring speech. They've always held that instinct and held that legal right to do so. We were the exception, Matt. And so, like, What's interesting about your testimony in front of Congress this week was the way they, as you point out, they openly embrace the idea of censorship in America right. now. Right. Yeah, th th that's absolutely true. Americans, and, we, and I saw this when I lived overseas in Russia, we've always had something different about us when it came to speech. I mean, I think that was something, one of the great things that we brought to the world where, whenever we traveled was that we were raised in an environment where it was a given that nobody could tell us what to do or say. And if anybody tried, you know, they were going to come into some difficulties. Uh, that American attitude was, I think, very important. It was very central to who we were as a people. And now we're seeing it disappear. There, there's a whole generation, I think, that's growing up now that actually thinks that things like hate speech are against the law already mm -hmm. in some way. And it, that's not the case. They don't, they don't know what the laws are. They don't know what the First Amendment is. We saw that in our, in our previous hearing, that there were members of Congress who didn't really know what that was. So that, that's pretty scary, and you're right. And there's big, been a big change in what those attitudes are. So I want to read this from Elon Musk. This is about the Irish law that you and I began to discuss. It's hard to uh, explain to the audience how extreme this Irish proposed law is. But Elon Musk says language being proposed as law in Ireland means this could literally happen to you for having a meme on your phone, um, meaning possession of a meme could be criminalized in Ireland. I want to hear your response to this, Matt. This is, I, look, you're not a partisan. In fact, I think for most of your life, you probably would. You may still describe yourself as on the left. You know, I don't think of myself as partisan, but I, I want to be honest about my particular leanings or biases that I may have. So I think we're at a point now where the only defenders of free speech in America are, is the American right. The American left seems to have openly rejected the concept of free speech. And I'm not here to make the argument the American right is pure and principled and will always be a defender of free speech. They need to be watched. But they are the only ones currently in our given environment right now who are defending free speech. Your response? Sadly, I'd have to agree with you. I mean, I've um, made kind of my mission in the last four or five months or so trying to get people on the other side of the aisle, um, you know, on, on the traditional left to pay attention to this issue. I've, I've even done sort of town halls in places and, you know, tried to convince people of what's going on. There are a few scattered politicians like Ro Khanna, who I think, um, it, you know, in their heart of hearts, they're, they're still real civil libertarians, but they're not speaking out on this issue the way you would expect them to. Uh, so you're right. The people who are leading the, the charge on this, um, you know, are people like Jim Jordan in the House Weaponization of Government Committee. 
And, you know, that law uh, that you mentioned in Ireland, we, the, the thing that's so troubling about it is that you, you can be punished for it um, as written for something that you have not even published. And there's an there's an element of, of that already in policy in the policies of companies like YouTube. Like they, they can actually sanction you for for a video that you haven't published, but it is in your account uh, in YouTube. And uh, so we've already seen that process already be employed. Uh, I, so I wouldn't be surprised if that turned out to be a law. Oh man, it's it's an insane law in Ireland. I'm just a fearful of it coming to the United States. That kind of mindset, that kind of potential law. And I think we have to watch both. I'm not here to tell you, like, you have to watch the left, you have to watch the right, because there's a huge fight ahead for, for the concept of free speech. Matt, appreciate your role in that fight. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.